go to library.fiu.edu, and then you want to go to find, click on A to Z list. All right, let's click on R. And if we scroll down, we want to click on RefWorks new login. Again, RefWorks new login. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. So once you go in and you create your account, if you haven't done so, you have to go ahead and also open your FIU email account to verify that it is you. And once you're there, and you sign in, it's going to look like this. Once you sign in, it looks like this. Okay. You should see the interface. Now, this one has a whole bunch of citations and all sorts of stuff for us to show you. So <laughs> yours should probably be blank right now, right? Especially if you just create an account. All right. So um, once you get there, stay there and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, but I also wanted to open up a second window that says, you know, library.fiu.edu. We're going to go and do some exercises. Okay. All right, so once we're in there, just open up another library.fiu.edu. Just open up another tab on the same browser. Okay. All right, so do you want to... Okay, so let's see how this thing works. Normally, when we're um, doing research and we're in a database, that's usually how the most common way to send things into RefWorks. So let's do that. I'm going to go here to Research Start, A to Z, and I'm going to choose Psych Info. Actually, maybe I, should I choose the, should I do the catalog first? Now I'll do Psych Info first, and then we'll go back to the catalog. So I'm starting with Psych Info. And here it is. If you know the database, you can always put it in that box. If you don't know, that's when you need the subject list and things like that. So I'm going to search for graduate students. And stress or anxiety there we go. I well, thought you could I good. thought you guys could relate to that <laughs> although maybe you want to forget about it we Barbara and I were contemplating using happiness as our alternate term because <laughs> we could all use a little bit of that um, okay so graduate students stress or anxiety I'm gonna search and sadly, we find 1,728 articles that include those terms and the phrase graduate students. And so when you're in a database, we're not going to go deeply into the database, but we're going to use, we're going to think about, oh, I found good articles. How can I save them? So usually when you're in a database, it'll either have a place to click where you're identifying what you want or they sometimes will have a folder that you click and you're sort of creating a folder in the database. Here we're just going to click the boxes as we identify what might be useful. I'm going to pick that one. And of course, um, let's see. Why is everyone so anxious? Oh yeah, I'm going for this one. Okay, so we have three items. Oh, better yet, a longitudinal study. Can't avoid that. So then I'm going to come up, up here. I have I identified, I believe, four items. I'm going to um, go to save. Now, in this database, you have the ability to click cite, and it will show you citations. But we want to do more than that. That's why we're sending them to RefWorks. So we're going to click save, and we're going to click RefWorks. And it very quickly takes you here and say, yes, export to the newest RefWorks. Now, if we didn't have Ref RefWorks open, then it will say to you, put in your username and password. And if you're on your home computer, you'll probably save that information so you'll quickly be able to get in. But since we had it open, it immediately goes right in. It doesn't even ask me to sign in. And then I say, okay. So the four documents I had just sent over are here. And they're right here, one, two, three, four. 
I am a very, um, I'm, I can't say I'm neat in my office if you've ever visited me, but on my RefWorks account, I'm very neat. As soon as I send my stuff in, I usually move it into a folder right away. So I'm going to quickly do that. I, I choose the four things I just sent in. I'm going to assign it to a folder. In this case, I want to choose, I guess we have one up here with gra graduate students and stress. I'm going to put it in there. The four items are there. And so I've started collecting my, my records. I do that for a number of reasons. Um, so that was my first group, and these are what they call the last imported um, references. So as we're working today, I'm going to import some more references. They will also appear in the last imported. And generally, unless you do something to pull them out of last imported, they will stay there for 30 days. So they're, you're not, they're not disappearing. But after the 30 days, they're going to go into this My Folders that says Not in Folder. And, you know, you may have a whole bunch of things that you really wanted to use in your not in folder, meaning you haven't identified a subject folder or created a folder for them. So be, be aware of that. If you're not really um, good at keeping things organized, then do it like I do right away. Okay, let's do another search. I'm going to go back here to the library homepage. I'm going to go to the catalog. And I'm going to do, whoops, let's see if it'll let me do this. Graduate students. So here we are. Um, when I, I find 99 options, if I wanted to do my full stress or anxiety, I could, um, come here to the advanced search screen and I could put stress on the next line with anxiety and run my search. So I find 10 matching items and they're in all kinds of different places. I'm not going to be too picky here. We just want to show you how to get things to the database. So I'm going to choose um, this one here, add. And this is an example of one that you're filling in um, using these, this folder method. And so then you go up to the top after you've identified and you see how my folder has two items. So it's very similar. It's creating a folder. And again, I have to identify the ones I want to send. And then I'm exporting just like we were before. And this one is more picturesque. It's RefWorks that we're sending it to. And I say, yes, send it to RefWorks. And now it's sent the two more items from the library. I say, okay. <coughs> and in the last few seconds, these are the ones that I sent. So again, I do just what I did before. I click on that, and then I go. I can go to assign folder. I can put them into the other folder with the other 14, and now I've put those in there. Does that make sense? Okay. So the next place I'd like to search, where shall I put it? Let's do uh, Google Scholar. If you want to OR in Google, you have to put the OR in capital letters between the two items you want to OR, or what three, what, if you have to do another OR, you'd have to do another capital in capital letters. Uh-oh, you guys are going to have to help me. Um, traffic lights, oh, how could I be so lucky? Did I get them all? There's no, none others in the distance. Let's see, you guys, you got to move. Verify. Yes. Oh, would you please give me that one in the future? Okay, so when you, when you want to send something from um, Google Scholar, you go here to the, 
where it says site. And I'm going to, here they're giving you the citation in a format. So if you wanted to copy and paste it, you could do that. But our goal is to get it into RefWorks. So I just click RefWorks and it does the same thing it did before. Here's my one document from Google Scholar. Here it is. I click on it. What do I do? Assign to folder. I put it back in that one. So now I should have 17 items. And if I go here to my folders on the side, I see here's my GS and stress, 17. Okay? I can look at that whole folder if I want to. All right? Let's see. I think you're next. Oh, yeah, you're going to show how to do it indirectly. So sometimes uh, some databases, because all of them are different and the interfaces are different, um, you have to see about, there's usually a way to export them, but it's not as you don't see like a nice little RefWorks button or anything like that. So an example that we use in the medical school, always we use the database Ref, uh, um, PubMed quite a bit, especially for biomedical literature. So if we were to open up um, and everybody can follow along, go to PubMed, gov we can see about running that same search and see what we get so I just did that uh, 22,000 or no more than that um, quite a few but let's say, again, just to demonstrate, we could see the, the top two here. Maybe these are the ones that we want to go ahead and choose. So we select this one, select the second one. And here in PubMed, you will go to Send to Citation Manager. Okay. So once you do that, it's going to generate a file. You'll see it open up over here on the bottom. So... With RefWorks, if you open up RefWorks, right, this is your interface, right? You want to go ahead and click that little plus button or the add to add a reference. Once you do that, click on import references. You want to see about finding that file. So we can select from the computer or I believe I can drop it right here. And once I just did that, it says to recognize it. It is an LLM, NLM PubMed file. We'll go ahead and click import. And those two, one, those two that we chose, that we chose, or I chose, are there. And again, what do we do? Put it in your folder because you want to have it everything organized, right? So that makes it easier when you're looking for stuff later. So go ahead and then let's assign it to a folder again. GS and stress. So now we have 17. Now we should have 19. So it's always good to double check 19. So it did import. And it's right there. Okay. It's very nice. Another thing that it's very nice about RefWorks is let's say you're searching the web. You're looking at different, um, if you read the newspapers, especially, uh, RefWorks has a web capture tool that's very nice and it helps with capturing that information. So for instance, Everybody, if you go to the Wall Street Journal or one of your newspapers, maybe like the Miami Herald, the Chicago Tribune or something like that, go ahead. If you want to go and open up one of those, I'll show you. But here for today, I have the Wall Street Journal open, right? <laughs> so right here, let's see what's going on in the Wall Street. So here, House to Subpoena, Sondland sets up Trump showdown. Okay. Lots of stress there in the White House, so. <laughs> So we click there, click on any story, and uh, using RefWorks, and it's important that I show you how to do this first. If we click on RefWorks, under Tools, you have to install this on your browser. Now I suggest that you use Chrome or Firefox, not Explorer. It doesn't really work with Explorer, but Chrome or Firefox it does, and you make sure that you have to show your toolbars. So once you do that, you just go into Tools, and right here, Save ref References on the Web. Click on that, Install, Save to RefWorks, 
And what you do is just drag this to your browser. Make sure that your bookmarks bar or your toolbar is shown. So just drag it there to the browser to install. Okay. Again, so if you go to tools, it's gonna go back and show you. So again, tools, right? Click on that. Yes, okay, so again, if you go to the RefWorks interface. Oh, the Chrome browser, okay. So right here, okay, bookmarks and you wanna make sure that you check off show bookmarks bar if you're using Chrome. If you're using Chrome, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just drag it to the, yeah. Yeah, so again, the way you do that again is under tools. Right, click tools again. And then when you click on install, save to RefWorks, just grab this little save to RefWorks and drag it to the bookmark, okay? So the, the, the bar, just drag it up there. All right, so we're back to the Wall Street Journal. So here's our story. I wanna see about, you know, I need a paper, I want something, you know, like a, an article, something what's going on, something current. So I could go ahead, click on save to RefWorks. So it's smart, it just read it, it says the newspaper article, it captured the authors, all these tags, the publication title, the publishing date, the, also the page, well, not the pages, but an abstract, the URL, caught some information there, okay? It might work differently depending on where you're going, maybe like if you go to the Miami Herald, you might, you might not find newspaper article, but you can go ahead and change the type of reference, okay? It just depends on how the site is coded but it does save a lot of time when you're looking at stuff on the web. Okay, and you can see all sorts of things that you can capture. All right. What I like about the, save to the, the web capture tool also, let's say if you're back on um, our favorite here, Google Scholar, right? Let's say that I like a lot of these, I think these are gonna be great and stuff. I can go ahead and use that save to ref works, the web capture tool and I can grab all of the ones that are on that page, on the results page. And I could click either, I can select all, or maybe I want this one, maybe I want this one. I like the way, you know, I think this is gonna be great for my paper, and go ahead and save to RefWorks. And it'll upload each one of these, okay? Saves a lot of time. The same thing, if you wanna do it in, um, in, Ref, in PubMed, let's say I like maybe more than just these two. Again, save to RefWorks. I can select all that appear on that page, or maybe this one, or this looks like a good one here too. And you can go ahead and save to RefWorks. And once you go click View in RefWorks, those two that I just imported using that web capture tool. It saves a lot of time, right? So what do I do now? Save it to the folder, right? So I'll assign it to folder. And now I should have 21. Okay, it's very easy to use, very easy to use. And again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask, especially did, was that a little bit crazy? Or? I was the music. Go ahead. Okay. No, we'll work. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm going to need to go back. Okay. So, go ahead. No, definitely. Yes, go ahead. So, you know how when you do the newspaper article, it gave you the abstract and so on. Um, is there a place where you as you're going through the individual um, listings that you can put a little summary of what you read? Or only the start of your time? You can add notes, actually. Yeah, so if you want to write a little something about the, the article and also add tags, because that also makes it easier to search for stuff, right? It's not just that you're assigning it to folders, but maybe you want to have something within that folder that you want to look at. 
you also can create subfolders too, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, there's many different ways of organizing that. Yeah, so this is a couple of things. Another thing too that I like about RefWorks is that let's say for all of you that uh, are still using paper and you have all those PDFs and stuff collected, right? So you have all your articles in one place. Now, this is very nice. I love showing this to folks. So let's say here's an article. Let me minimize this. Right. Right. So here's an article that I found. Wait. Right. This is something that I'm collecting for a paper or a manuscript that I'm writing. So I can go ahead, just drop it, right? Just grab and drop it into RefWorks. And right there, it's reading it. So it'll create from the metadata that's on that PDF, it'll create a reference for you, a citation. So right there, it's extracting that information. Oops. We can go ahead and add it again. Or what we also could do is you can go ahead and add reference, upload a document. And from the desktop, that's where I had it. And it should go, should go ahead and read it. There we go. So let's say you have all these PDFs and stuff that you're collecting for your paper, your manuscript, you can go ahead and drag and drop them into RefWorks and it'll read that information. Yeah. But how do we make sure we get into specific files? So that you're not dragging and dropping too much. So. And then you won't remember where. How you have Right. So making that. sure when you go into because it always will be, like Stephanie was showing you like last imported and once you go ahead and click that assign it to a folder. Always make sure to keep it you know nice and organized in a folder. So I like that. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And there you go. Let me go ahead and drag this to the bottom. Right, so very easy, and it just does it for you. It's, just, it's very nice, okay? How do you delete files? Okay, so if you go ahead and click on, so for instance, this is a good one here because I just went ahead and made a mistake. So this one, because I didn't quite uh, move over, right? You can go ahead and click delete. Make sure that you select it, so go ahead and click delete. Oh. and places in the trash but just like your computer it's going to stay there until you delete it again exactly so that's a pretty good yeah, feature yeah it's a nice feature to have so just in case you forget or something so yeah it's All a right. moment of madness I right okay <laughs> <laughs> there are a few things i want to point out one thing um i think that you may have noticed and this is something with RefWorks that you need to kind of keep on top of is as we've been working today, it keeps opening up RefWorks folders. Each of them, you want to make sure you're working with the most recent one. So this is our most recent one. So I want to get rid of my earlier folders as I'm going because I don't want to. Uh, mm -hmm. But I will say this. I think that they, I noticed that they keep up updating uh, recently. They used to not up, update. Mm -hmm. So they're all going to have the most recent stuff because this was the last thing you, he brought in. But you don't need the 20 windows. Do you know what I mean? You only want, well, here was the one that we had for, that we, you use tools for, I guess. So I'm going to get rid of that one too. Here's the one that we're working on, the last one. So you want to at least have, you just want one window. You, so when, you, when you're um, importing, Every time you import, it opens a window. So you do have to kind of keep on top of that. Um, it will, uh, you, and I like that they're updating. In the past, they didn't update. And so if you opened up a RefWorks window that was the older window, the things you just sent wouldn't be visible. Now they are. They all know that they're related to each other, apparently. The wonders of, of technology. Um, so you're not using the wrong window, but you don't need 20 windows open of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So just be aware that you do want to do a little cleanup uh, after a while because it will make your screen um, 
irritating to work with. One thing that um, I didn't mention before that I did want to mention is that when you are bringing things in, depending where they come from, they could be incomplete records, there could be problems with the record. I noticed when Frank brought this one in, my, I like, immediately had like a moment. Uh, so when you click on a record, it will open up on the side like this. And if you need to edit it, you just click this edit uh, pencil here. Now, one thing that, um, first of all, you shouldn't have all caps for a title. So to me, that was the first thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. Um, you definitely want to fix that. This is a really nice record. Let me see if there's one that's a little less. Which one did you pull in from um, the Wall Street Journal? Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay. Um, because I wanted to see one that was not very, very good. So let's close that. I wanted to see if there was one that was might have been missing something. What happens is sometimes you bring something in, it will seem a little incomplete. And when that happens, um, the system has a very nice feature. I'll use this one, even though we know it's probably okay. Um, when you do edit, it has this thing, the lightning bolt. And sometimes something, the, the record might seem okay, or maybe, maybe we're wondering, let's see, does this one show a DOI? It does. A lot of times you'll get them and it might not show the DOI. So sometimes you wanna use the lightning bolt to see if you can get a more complete record. So I sometimes will do the lightning bolt and look for it. It's doing a DOI lookup. Oh, that's a new one. That's a new feature just for the DOI lookup. Oh, that's beautiful. I didn't even notice that because here's the one at the top. So normally you would click this and then it does like a little search and it tries to find, did you mean? You see how there's more than one? There's one, one from the Lancet, which is, this one's from Slovenia, same title. You know, I mean, you go through and sometimes you find exactly, um, you find a better record. So when you're looking at a record that's missing pieces, do the lightning bolt and see if you come up with a better record. If you do, you would, then you'll pick it and save it. If you don't find the better record, then you don't need to save it. Okay, so that's why you would just you just do cancel if you don't want the other record you might thought might work. So I really love that. When you're in um, Scholarly databases, you may not run into that too much, but um, you know, it happens. You you find different things that could be um, irritating that don't work for you. So, like this, I would have to change. You have to change that because you can't have that. Uh, only I don't think there's a citation format that does all caps for titles. So, I don't think it were. I don't know why they bothered to do that, but that you would definitely fix. Now, one of the things that um, we have, I've been playing around using assigned to folder here but there's also the my folders list. Anything that you do not put into a folder is going to end up in the not in folder folder. So be aware of that. If you know you found something, but it never, you don't see it where you think it should be, go to your not in folder folder and make sure that nothing that you really liked is still in there, move it to the other folder. Um, this is the not in folder folder. So let's see, here's one on graduate students. So then I would just, you know, choose it and then put it into the folder, you know, and get it into my, my graduate student folder. Um, I'm sure those Indonesian students are stressed out also. Um, you know, and that's just an important piece of the puzzle. One thing you can also do uh, that I, I think is interesting is you can take something and you could create subfolders too. So for example, here I'm saying assign to folder. Um, I might want to create a subfolder. Mm -hmm. So the name, the new folder might be called um, really bad stress. <laughs> and then it's subfolder from graduate students and stress. So if you want to create subfolders, you can do that. Um, so now I have a really bad stress um, subfolder in there, okay? So you have the ability to do that. You can also drop and drag. So even though I'm in the habit of going to assign to folder, 
um, you have the ability to take something and just drag it to this folder. So I'm used to doing it the other way, but you can select and then move things over. Um, one thing I found about RefWorks is they usually have more than one place where you can do the same thing. So it, it appeals to people who are uh, in different people. You know, we all have our orientations of what we prefer to do. And that's one of the things that happens. Um, let's see. Sharing. Now, um, a lot of people do projects together and um, at, or whether they're at the same institution, at different institutions. And this is where um, in sharing, you have the ability to share a folder. So the sharing settings for this one, you choose the folder. And let's see, let's say we're sharing the one we're just working with. And you have options. You can have only invited people access it or anyone at FIU could join this folder. It could be a public URL. You have a choice. Once you decide that you want to share, then um, you also have to, you can invite people to share and then you can identify what they can do. So if you only want them to read, you would put their um, email addresses in here, separated by commas. In this case, they can read. If you want them to be able to annotate, you would do that as well. Or if they can modify, you can identify that they can modify. So you're in control of what the people you share with um, are capable of doing to that folder. So, you know, it really depends um, how you're sharing. I think that um, I don't do a lot of sharing uh, using my RefWorks account, so I have to admit that I don't have a lot of experience playing with it, but I hear that for projects in a class, it's usually easy to do the sharing. Sometimes if you're sharing with people outside of the institution, I'm not sure that it's as, as, it works as well, right? Yeah, it's a little bit Yeah, it can be tricky. So, um, you know, to me, that's pros and cons to that. But there are different ways that you can share what you're using. Let's see. What does it say when, when like I'm trying to download a file? I guess it's very large. It says that it can't be processed, but it's still downloading. Is that really indicative of something being a very large file? I don't know. Um, I would have to take a look at your okay. situation, what you're what you're do using. Um, I m one thing I have found when Frank was doing the um, PDF before, I found that a lot, sometimes the PDF, it, it, when I'm drag and dropping, it won't listen to me, but if I upload it, it does it. So I just decided not to be so um, bothered about that. You know, I'm willing to, I'm willing to upload. Um, so I don't know. Let's see. Do you want me to? Do you want to do the the bibliography and then I'll do the? Um, I don't know what my next thing is. Oh, is this me? Okay, it's up to you. So now you're ready to go into that folder and see about creating a bibliography. All right. So let's go back to click on or whatever folder you created. Let's click on our graduate students in stress. Right. So here we have all of our references in this folder, nice and organized. We know what's going on. And one of the nice things about this folder before you go ahead and create a bibliography is that it has a find duplicates feature. Okay. That's very important because sometimes you're clicking, you're going crazy in all those databases. You don't realize, wait a minute, I might've gone like two of the same thing, or sometimes there's overlap in databases. You don't know. So right over here. So I click on the folder, right? I selected it. And here under tools again, find duplicates, right? And it'll do an exact match, right? Comparing titles, authors, publication dates and reference, all that, or a close match. Okay, some elements there that should probably are similar, okay? And then it'll go ahead and find the duplicates mm -hmm. too. So that way you're able to, so that's very helpful, especially when you're creating a bibliography, right? So, Doing that before you create the bibliography just makes it a lot easier, a lot cleaner, right? So here we go. So if you want to create a bibliography, go ahead and click the little quotation marks, create a bibliography. Go ahead, click bibliography again. 
And here are my 23 in APA. Nice and simple and clean, right? Now, let's say I want to switch and uh, it's now, let's see about if I want to switch, especially in the medical school, we use a different citation style a lot, which is AMA, the American Medical Association style. So we can go ahead and switch it to AMA and the 10th edition is the current edition. And there it is. And you can go ahead back and forth. You could also search for styles. There's thousands of styles out there, believe it or not, especially when it comes to certain manuscripts and journals. So you can actually go ahead, type in the title of that journal and you'll probably find the citation style of that journal as well. So it makes it very, very easy. So it's very easy to toggle back and forth and switch. And you just can create, you know, your bibliography, copy it to a clipboard, paste it to a Word document or a Google Doc. Very nice. Okay. Now. Can I share something? Sure, of course. One thing that I like about even using this just as I'm making my way through is that if you look at the bibliography, you sort of get used to seeing the citations in the format. And it's a great way to take a quick scan to see if there are any problems with your citations. Um, this one is like having a little bit of a um, moment. <laughs> it's, let's see if we could, yeah. uh, let's see if it'll come out again. Okay, here we go. Oh. Yeah, let's not, do, not last important. Let's go back to our folder yeah, and then let's, do, let's create a bibliography. Yeah. Right there. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, I'm I'm already noticing because I'm used to doing citations. Oops, here this one has abbreviation for this for the journal. That's not okay. I need to go into that citation and fix that abbreviation. Um, Yes, if you were just doing one bibliography, putting it into Word and, and handing it in, I'd say, fine, copy, paste, go fix it in Word. But most of the time, you are using this with a bigger project at hand. And because you want those citations to come out right all the time, you want to make sure you fix it in the database. So here, I would be looking at this going, OK, so I know the Wessler I have got to fix. Um, in, a, in AMA, is it permit, are you permitted to use um, uh, abbreviations? abbreviations yes. Yeah, yeah, see, in APA, I APA. thought, yeah, I was, APA, you can't. So let me see what happens with APA, because I was looking, and I thought I saw some abbreviations, and I was like, nope, that nope, can't no, be no. there. See, yeah. yeah, and I see doubles. Yeah, right. that was the, right. yeah, you probably saw... Because that was what I saw. I didn't realize you were in MA, and I'm like, holy moly. And then there was that one that had all the, all the capital letters for the title. That has to be. But this is great. Right off the bat, I see I've got to get rid of something. You know, I see there are two of these, and there's something different about them. That right. helps me realize yeah. I have a duplicate, and one of them has a citation, has a URL. One doesn't. Oh, this one actually gives the range of pages. That one doesn't. These are the kind of things you're looking at thinking, I like this one, I don't like that one, you know, and it helps you. Anyway, that's just a, a side thing. Do you have? So a little bit of an update too. Now this one, we have the current style, which is APA 6. As of October 1st, we just switched October, to. Well, I don't know. They have no, it's it's not October yet. 15th, I think, or something. Yeah. APA 7. APA 7. Has just, was just released, so it's changed. We're gonna see now, hopefully now all the citation managers like will have an update soon. We'll see how soon, but um, I, I think for now yeah, you'll really. be safe with six, but just so you be aware, yeah, you might have to make some changes and stuff too if you're using it, but I don't think that you'll have a problem right now. Yeah, I, and I'm not sure that the citation changes will be so big that for the, mo for the time being, you'll probably be fine with six, but trust me, your professors will tell you if you're an APA user uh, what they want and we'll all, we'll all figure it out. Um, I see some faces like, really, what? <laughs> we don't know, we, we don't, don't know fully yet. know. Yeah. We have some ideas, we know what some of the changes are, but I have things I have on a wish list, but I hope, <laughs> I'm not sure they're gonna do it. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay. Do you want me to do this one? So another thing too that's very nice is that here is, um, again, our graduate students and stress folder. And we wanna look at the views because it's very nice. You could actually click, this is the normal view, right? You can click on it and view the record here on the side. You can also make corrections like Stephanie was showing you with that little pencil to edit. 
But let's say, um, you know, I want to look at things a little bit different and just to look at my citations again before I create that bibliography. This is another way. So we can go ahead and switch it to table view. For those of you that like those um, Excel spreadsheets, this looks more like an Excel spreadsheet. And again, here, if you click on the record, you're able to make edits as well, change the different reference types, the title, even your tags. Okay. You can add notes. That's a nice place where you want to put that information or maybe you want to write something about the, that citation. Here it would go. And again, you could look and see maybe I'm missing the edition. I should add the edition. Maybe the published date is wrong. This is where I want to make some, some changes. Um, so right here under the view, because by default you'll have the normal view, right? I'm in my folder. Once again, I'm in my folder, graduate students of stress, right? So this is the folder, the view that's by default, which is the normal view, right? You'll see it up here. If you click on the drop down, you can switch it to table view and it'll look like this. And how do you go in and add a note? Go you click on the record, view, right? Right. You can go down, scroll, and you can edit. And then I have add more fields. Add more fields too. And you could add different things too there. Custom field one, four, date retrieved, one for a DOI, all sorts of stuff. Editors, source names, volume even. Okay. Those things, um, those things will vary. Uh, Depending on the type of citation, yeah. yeah. When you're when you're playing around with adding things, let me. I want to take us back a little bit. Okay, so give me a moment. Let's uh, cancel. I'm going to go back to normal view so it looks a little more normal. <laughs> and when I click on an item, on the side here is how it comes up. And you see how it says journal article? So when I'm going to edit, one of the things that's important is that the reference type. So if it's a journal article, then the fields that are necessary for a journal article usually appear above this section that says add more fields, okay? Like notes are not gonna be important, but it because it says journal title, journal article, it's providing the fields for that. If this was changed to book, it's gonna change the different fields and you'll have to fill in different fields. See how it has addition, you see? So normally it knows what it is. Every once in a while, you could be in a situation where you might add a, uh, your own, and then you have to identify what is it I'm adding. So if you were in a situation like that, you want to make sure that you have identified the format of the item you're adding, because the fields will change depending on what it is, and they have the ability for you to add all kinds of things. So that's how come the fields that exist are usually given right away sometimes when we pull things off the web it's not sure what it is right. you have to identify what it is so you can put the right fields in and the part about add more fields is sometimes something's missing or you you have a bit of information that you can add it gives you an opportunity to do that um, but most of the views which he's only shown you at this moment table view they all have the ability for you to edit you know to edit your your item anyway right. i hope i so one of Stephanie's favorite views is this one I'm about to show you, right? She loves this one. So under normal, you can go to full view. That'll show you the entire record, right? You can go ahead and edit here too as well. You can see a little bit more of the record here, adding tags, different things as well. And the last view is the citation view. This is Stephanie's favorite, right? So what's nice about this is, Right, gives you some clues. So, you know, you're writing, you're putting your paper together, your bibliography, um, and you'll see that some of these fields are highlighted. You see the yellow? This means that this field is probably required by this style, by APA. All right? You might want to add a volume. You might want to add an issue or a page range. Right? And then there's some that are here highlighted that are blue. It may be required by this style. And click to add. Very simple, clicking there, and you're able to edit that record, see? And once you make the change, you can save it, okay? So before you put 
that you know you copy and paste it into Word or that Google Doc, you can go and edit it here. So it's very nice that it shows you it put you know it picks out those little the, these different areas here, so the yellow and the blue. Very nice. And again, it works with multiple citation styles. Okay. So now, this is where the real magic comes in. And this is what you guys will definitely love. So of course, um, I said that RefWorks is all web-based. It is on the cloud, but you do have a couple of things that you can install just like on your web browser, but also it has a plugin that you can install on Microsoft Word or an add-in into Google Docs. And it installs right on the ribbon or the command ribbon of Word. That's where you have your file, edit, all that. So if you open up Word, here we go, uh, sample paper down at the bottom. So here's a sample paper. Let me move this down to the bottom. All right. So here's where it's very simple. This is the command ribbon. Right. And right here I have a plugin. I actually, I can show you right now where to install. This is RefWorks. Okay. This will actually will sync to the database and your folder. Everything that you have stored in your RefWorks account will be here. So before I show you that, let me show you where you go and you get it. And this works with all different versions of Word. And we're back to RefWorks. Again, under Tools. Click Tools again. And if we scroll down to Site in Word, you can install the Write in Site plugin onto Microsoft Word. Okay, and there's different versions here that you have uh, even for Mac as well, it works. Okay, there's all different versions here. If you have Windows 10, if you have Windows 8, Windows 7, supports Word uh, 2016, 2013, 2010, as well as for Mac. Okay, of course you want to find out what version of Mac that you're running as well as your operating system before you install it. Okay, but it will install on the ribbon of Microsoft Word. So. We go back to our Word document. Here's a sample paper. Right. So want to go ahead and sign in. It'll ask you to sign in right here when you go to the, oops. I'm sure you guys can't see. So here's your ribbon. Once you install it, oops. Once you install it, it's gonna look like this, right? So you'll have a RefWorks little tab right there in Microsoft Word. You wanna log in, and then the first thing you wanna do is sync your database. It's gonna sync all that data, all those citations that you saved into your RefWorks account. So give it a little bit while it's doing it. Okay. So I want to make sure that my citation style is okay. Should be APA. Let me see if there's other styles here. Okay, save. All right, and you can switch the styles however you want. So I'm ready to insert my citation. Here is a, my first uh, sentence. So I want to do your famous in-text citation here for your paper. Go ahead, insert citation. Let's go to new. And let's find our graduate students in stress folder. Okay, so here it is. Let's say I want to add this one by Baker. Looks pretty good. So I go ahead, click OK. And there it is, right into your paper. Saves a lot of time, huh? Now sometimes you're quoting not just multiple authors from one work, but maybe multiple works. So this is what's nice because it's smart. And right here, let's go again, let's hit new. Let's go to our graduate students and stress folder. And let's add this one by head. This one looks like a good one here to add. So let's go ahead and click okay. And there, it's separated and it knows the rules. By order of public, you know, the when it was published, and also there. So now let's say I want to go ahead and use Baker again. 
and notice all the multiple authors there, right? So here for the this one, for the second sentence, let's use Baker again. And right now it's saved like which are the last ones that you used. So let's click on Baker and it knows the rules. So at all for the next time that it appears in your document. Very simple. It saves a lot of time when you're writing that paper, right? And the nice thing is, this is a nice little magic trick here. So you want to switch it to, let's say, AMA. I want to switch, send it to another uh, manu, you know, for another class or another manuscript. It knows, so it's by order of appearance. That's the way AMA looks. And you can switch it back and forth, back and forth, very easy, right? So here at the end of my document, I can go ahead and insert that bibliography. So there it is in AMA style. And if I want to switch it to APA, wham, right there. Simple, right? Makes whole, life a whole lot easier. <laughs> now, the thing is with this, is that, you know, it's very nice that it works and all that, but also make sure that before you submit this paper, let's say if you're submitting it through whatever learning management system such as Canvas, you want to make sure that you remove the field codes. That's one of the things that's very important because this right here, if you click on it, this is code. You see how it's grayed out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Before you submit it, before you turn it in, you have to make sure that you remove the field codes. Oh, it shows exactly where Exactly, it. because if you were to submit it, you're gonna get a bunch of errors. It'll look like something ref error, something with a bunch of you know gibberish and stuff. You don't want that. So remove the field codes. Actually, we recommend that you save a master. Two copies. Yeah, save the one with the field codes copy it, another copy. Right, yeah, and because <laughs> once you do this, you get this lovely little error message, warning, you're about to remove codes. This is a one-time deal, okay? Save it like that, copy it, and then remove it from the second one. Right. Yes, you know, you could make, you could say um, Why do you master or save? something at the end of your file. Why do you want the one with the highlighted code saved? Because what if you need to do it, something else with it? Yeah. You know, what if you want to change it to another format? That one with the code has, is still connected right. to your database. Right, Or for instance, your professor's giving it back to you. I need you to pump this up. I need you to write some more. I need some more references, such as in a dissertation. Yeah, because it, it does happen. I could, so I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> right? Yeah. So make sure that you have those two copies, because if you were to submit it with the codes, likely you'll see some errors. So make sure that you have that. Yeah. Right. And one of the things I found when I'm correcting papers, if the code is there, it doesn't let me do the commenting I want to do sometimes. So, you know, your professor doesn't usually want to see the code. So you always want to make sure you save a master so it's connected to the database, but then you'll do other uh, copy it for how you're going to share with right. him or yes. her. It'll do it for the entire document. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to show you. If you were to click any one of those citations, the in-text citations, you'll see it grayed out. Now, go ahead. Do you need to do that actually just for the PDF with the error code that come out, or is it just? Um, I think if it's you convert it to PDF. Okay, no, so you won't, you won't have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're turning in a PDF, it's hard to grade unless you have certain abilities so it's hard right. to add comments yeah because your professor's always going to write something on the margin and yeah so yeah but it's nice it saves a lot of time right it instead does. of doing it yeah. by hand you know you have all your stuff so this saves a lot of time yeah very simple huh do you have any questions about this and it does work with mac we did get a question from the zoom room also the uh web capture tool that we were talking about earlier, it does work with Safari for you Mac users, so you can use it with Safari as well. Yeah, okay. Mac is a little different. It doesn't go into the. Um, yeah. It doesn't go like this. It has like a floating bar. Floating bar. Uh, and from what I've read, their Word will eventually have similar to the Mac as opposed to Mac going to the Word version. It's going to be more like the way Mac is, but they right. haven't put it out yet. Can you show how to install Okay, so how to install Write Insight. Let me minimize the document. Okay. 
So again, if you have your own computers and then if you want to do it at home, right? Here you go. So back again, let me show you. Back to your RefWorks interface. Click on Tools. Click on Tools again. And here's where you will find, you know, where you install the, the web capture tool as well as the Write and Cite. So Cite in Microsoft Word. And there's different versions of that, you know, depending on what type of, what word you're running as well as the operating system. Okay. So I think you have a Mac, mm -hmm. right? So you could find the one for Mac. Most of the time it will recognize it when you open it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll probably give you the Mac options when you. Right. So you see it open up on the side. Yeah. Yeah. So you just click download and then it will download. And right. When you go to Microsoft Word and you open it up, but you should see that on the top. The you top. see it on the ribbon. Exactly. The ribbon. And then you'll see it. It'll say login. That's what you want to do. Yeah. It'll just come up. Right. Yeah. So it's very nice that yeah, it has that. Okay. So of course, no. If you have any questions about that. Okay. Another nice thing that it does, it does work well with uh, Google Docs. It's an add-in. I think we have enough time to, to show, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So for those of you that collaborate and use Google Docs a lot, I know I do. Um, this is very nice. So let's see. Yeah. And please, guys, if you have any questions, just shout it out. Yeah, this is a workshop, so. So. See, this is being videotaped, so if I want to watch it again, can I watch it again or no? Yes. It's not. Yeah. Yes, this is being recorded on Zoom, so you guys will be able to, to access it later if you want. So, for instance, I am also, here's a sample paper that Rebecca and I put together for workshops such as this one. So here I'm writing, here's a Google Doc. Right. Right. <laughs> it is awesome. Right, so when I, <laughs> so if you go, here's your Google Doc. And there's your cool today, so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want to go to add-ons, right? This is how it'll install on the ribbon. So add-on and get add-ons. And you want to go and find ProQuest RefWorks. Yes, right there. We already installed it. I already installed it in my account, so it's there. But get add-ons, right? ProQuest RefWorks. And once you do that, click on that, and it'll, you'll see Manage Citations. And here's your RefWorks account with all your stuff. Your citations will be there, right? So let's say I want to go into a folder because that shows you all references, but I want something to use something for my dissertation. All right? Star Wars, yes. Sorry, guilty as charged. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so here's your sentence, right? I want to go ahead and use the citation, and you could choose any one of them. And there it is, it's formatted, it does it for you, and it generates the bibliography at the same time on a Google Doc. So what's nice about Google Doc is that, you know, it uses it to collaborate in real time with others, and it'll do it. Any questions about using Google, the, the plugin, or the add-on, rather? Okay. Yeah. So it works nicely with Google Docs and Microsoft Word. I was curious, have you guys, have any of you used RefWorks before in the past or have you used any other citation management tool? What, what? Perlo. Perlo? Okay. Any other ones? <laughs> no, 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 I don't know that one. <laughs> Zotero. 
Well, this is good because this is a plug for our future workshops because next week we're actually, we're going to teach EndNote. Have any of you heard about EndNote? Okay, EndNote. And then the following week, we're going to teach Zotero on the 22nd. Yeah. Are they pretty much all the same thing? That's a loaded question. It's really pretty much, they all have different features, but they pretty much do the same thing. It's all, you know, it's how you feel comfortable with the interface. If you're used to working in a different way, you know, some of them work a little bit better for collaboration with others or in groups. So they all have different features. Yeah. At the beginning of the semester, we had a workshop where we compared the features of all four. So um, we're going to do that again, probably next semester, but we are teaching all four of them. Um, not Mendeley this semester, but the following semester, most likely, yeah.